uh, will be uh, Jaap Nienhuis. Jaap is a professor at the University of Utrecht. And he will talk today about a global morphodynamic response of deltas to sea level rise in the 21st century. And yeah, if you can, yes. Yes. Okay, your screen is on, so go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Albert, and thank you, Brendan, as well, for your earlier talk. It was very insightful. Um, so for something completely different, I'm going to talk about um, river deltas and sea level rise and projections of how they might change um, in the next century. And this is work that I've been doing at Utrecht with, uh, together with Roderick van der Waal, funded by NSF uh, and the Dutch Science Foundation. Um, so how, would, how will deltas respond to sea level rise? Uh, well, there, there are a lot of projections out there, and this is part uh, actually what inspired us to do our work. And a lot of the current projections that are out there are, 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 what, we, um, are what we call bathtub models, and they simply assume some sort of static DEM um, a, a, a digital elevation model that is then flooded depending on its elevation above mean sea level. Um, and one of the, the big problems with a lot of these uh, sea level rise projections that use static DEMs is that actually when you look at what has happened in the past 20 or 30 years, uh, take into account historic sea level rise and also observations of what, what coastlines and deltas have done, um, is that, that these bathtub models do not fit observations. So we've seen sea level rise, but at the same time over these past decades, we've actually seen coastlines expand. Um, and of course, a, a big a component of that, and that's something I'll, I'll, I'll gonna discuss, um, is that a lot of coastlines have been able to expand because of sediments. Um, so that I, what I wanna talk about um, is a new model that, that Roderick and I have, uh, have made that includes sediments uh, as well as sea level rise in a model um, and that can project how deltas will change and, and also, of course, how deltas have changed into the past. And this model, uh, probably many of you have, uh, have seen a model like this before. It's, it's very, very simple. Looking at a river delta from the side uh, with water and sediments uh, coming in and slowly equilibrating to some sort of base level. And, and the big insight in this model that has been validated by, by numerous of experiments and also uh, field work is that the response of the delta to sea level rise uh, depends on, on two major things. One is that the rate of sediment input uh, and the other is the rate of sea level rise. And depending on the balance of these two rates, um, if you have sea level rise, the delta might still be able to expand uh, just if there's enough uh, sediment um, to fill up that that accommodation space. So you might have a situation of delta growth uh, for sufficient sediment supply, but if sediment supply is, is diminished, you might also have diminished delta growth or even delta retreat. Yes, and this is the, this is the, the shoreline response of that delta to sea level rise in these um, three scenarios. Um, so you can probably imagine this is a really simple model that's gonna be fairly inaccurate applied to just one uh, river delta. So to make our projections uh, more accurate, uh, what we do instead is we look at uh, all 10,000 river deltas um, at the same time. And it allows us to look at uh, river deltas for a variety of delta morphologies, a variety of sediment supplies, and most importantly, also a variety of relative sea level rise rates. So we can then contrast deltas with very low sea level rise to deltas with very high sea level rise and, and improve our model fit. Um, so what we've done for all these 10,000 uh, deltas, we have sediment supply from WM said, and we have sea level from the past uh, 30 years from a recent paper by, by Sanke Dangendorf. Uh, we also have subsidence that of course can change the relative sea level rise in river deltas. Um, and to compare um, our delta model, we also have Landsat observations of what deltas have done uh, over the past uh, 30 years. And what we do, a uh, simple model testing of the past 30 years based on these Landsat uh, images, we find that there's a reasonable agreement uh, without any fitting or tuning. So here I plot the projected, predicted delta change using that model against observations from that Landsat data set. Um, and it's fairly rough um, um, because this is a, still a very simple model and, we, and 30 years is not very much uh, looking at the rate of sea level rise. Uh, most importantly, uh, however, is, is also that 
uh, when we look at only a fraction of, of the, uh, only the bigger deltas, our model fit uh, is improved. So going forward, uh, what does this delta tell us about future uh, relative sea level rise? Um, well, we can simply use the model for different and or higher amounts of relative sea level rise. And we can see that we're, we're currently still in this world where we see net delta uh, land gain, so between the two and four millimeters per year, right around here. But if we go into a world of, of increased rates of sea level rise of four or five, we will we'll see net delta loss. Um, and to give you some idea, this is about the area, uh, land area of, of uh, New York City that, that we'll lose uh, per year. Um, that's about 700 square kilometers per year for a rate of about 14 millimeters per year. Um, another cool thing with this model, of course, is that we can change the, the fluvial sediment supplies to all these deltas. Uh, so that red line was modern uh, values. Um, but if we look at what sediments used to be like before land use change or river damming, uh, we, see, we see that deltas become slightly more resilient uh, to sea level rise. We can also just eliminate a sediment supply and get back to those uh, bathtub projections that I talked about before. And we say that those greatly exaggerate the amount of land loss uh, for the same relative sea level rise rate. Um, of course, not all deltas are going to experience the same amount of relative sea level rise, so we can look at uh, different climate scenarios where different deltas experience different amounts of relative sea level rise. Uh, and we can see for uh, RCP 8.5, the deltas uh, in total, so all deltas together, uh, will lose about 800 square kilometers per year. Where this error bar is, is produced by doing a Monte Carlo analysis using all the known uh, uncertainties that, that we have in the data and the model. When we sum up all the land area change that we might expect from 2007 to the end of the century, um, we see that uh, under RCP 8.5, so the most extreme climate scenario uh, from the SROC report, we see that deltas uh, will have lost about 32,000 uh, square kilometers of land. And that's equal to about 4% of the entire uh, river delta land uh, currently uh, on Earth. Um, what we can, of course, also do is, is not talk about bulk change for all deltas together, but projections per delta. Uh, we see that the mixed image we have now, where some deltas gain land and others lose land, um, is going to change rapidly for increased rates of sea level rise by the end of the century. Uh, but I do want to note that these projections per delta, as I said before, are, are going to be fairly uh, uncertain. And, and last thing I wanted to talk about before my, my time is up, um, is that with this model, we can also uh, make a quantitative assessment of how important the different drivers are for delta change. Uh, so we can simply say, well, let's do a sediment supply analysis uh, only considering the dams or only considering uh, subsidence or, or sea level rise. What we see in the past 30 years is that the dams and subsidence and sea level rise have had an about an, an equal negative effect on delta um, land loss. So going from pristine uh, high pristine uh, land gain rates uh, to what we currently observe, all these three components have had about an equal uh, negative effect. However, if we go into the future uh, with RCP 2.6, uh, 4.5 and 8.5, we see that uh, again, if we look at the worst case scenario that, that climate change um, driven sea level rise is gonna have the major, um, a major effect on, uh, on delta land area change far exceeding what we see now because of dams and subsidence. Um, so to uh, conclude, um, we have made a sea level rise impact assessment, so land area change for deltas that are validated based on, on Landsat observations. Um, we can make global projections with changing sediments or sea level rise rates, and, and we can also quantify the net effect of these different components uh, on delta land change. Um, there's a preprint out there on Earth Archive, and there's also uh, some of this data is in a, a, an Earth Engine app that you can kind of scroll through. Um, and if you have any questions, um, there's email and Twitter as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jaap. That was wonderful. Um, so let's see. Are there any questions for Jaap about this Delta study? So and just to point out, if you have a question, Click on the blue hand and the participants. It will raise a hand and then 
can unmute. Don't be shy. If no questions were, oh, there we go. Um, Anna, let's see. You, you can unmute yourself, I think. You can ask the question. Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, great talk. Um, on slide 14, where you're showing that um, land gain versus land loss, there's sort of like a tipping point at a specific sea level rise. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that number might actually tell us. This one, you mean? Yeah. You mean the small kinks in the in the curve, or? Uh, no, where it, where it crosses the from delta land um, from land gain to land loss. Well, yeah. this is yeah. If you look at all deltas together, it's a it's a good question. If you look at all deltas together, it's a it's a a gradual uh, change of more and more deltas uh, will not have enough sediment uh, to make it to the coastline. Um, so the amount of of sea level rise. Uh, implies that you need to capture uh, sediment on the delta top itself uh, to, to prevent drowning. Uh, but you, for higher sea level rise rate, you need to capture more. And at some point, you cannot prograde anymore. Um, and you'll get into a stage of land loss. Uh, so that will happen with more and more deltas um, for higher and higher amounts of, of uh, relative sea level rise. 